Hi guys, I'm going to uh, show you this painting that I did yesterday and try and kind of duplicate it. I'm going to use slightly different colors today. What I did with this was a few puddle pours around in a circle and then in the middle a tree ring pour, which this is all that's left of the tree ring pour. And the colors were kind of muddy so I'm going to try and use different colors today and we'll see what happens. And I have a bigger canvas. I've mixed all my paints and got my canvas prepared. Got the little tacks in the corners to keep it up off the table surface. And this is a canvas that I bought at a thrift store that had a painting on it and I gessoed over it. And I've done that a few times and it, I've never had a problem. So we'll see how this goes. I've got all my paints mixed up, but I wanted to show you, I, I don't have that much paint in each cup. Um, I do have a large amount of blue that I'm gonna put all over the canvas. And I made this up with a lot of white, a lot of titanium white Liquitex, and then a dab of Windsor Blue by Windsor & Newton and Cerulean Blue by Windsor & Newton. And then I'm gonna show you my little recipe. Uh, this is about equal parts paint and pouring medium from Vallejo. And then I put in a dab of gloss medium from Vallejo. Not much. And then you give those a good stir. You want to get all the lumps out. I'm not that concerned about a lot of lumps because I've, I've had lumps and it's actually worked out in the paintings where it looks like a feature and not a mistake. So. I stir pretty well, but not perfectly all the time. Sometimes I have paint left in the bottom. Then I add about a teaspoon. For this amount of paint, I add about a teaspoon of Floetrol. Give that another good stir. Get that all incorporated. Scrape the sides. And then you want the paint to be about the consistency of maple syrup. So that's pretty good. I'm going to add a smidgen of water just to make sure it's nice and fluid. And then it's hard to see, but it's pretty good. All right, I'm happy with that. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to do the puddle pour like I did yesterday. Um, I don't have, I want to show you my paint colors. I have uh, Yellow Ochre by Windsor & Newton. Cadmium Red Hue by Windsor & Newton. These are all Windsor & Newton except for Titanium White Liquitex Basics. And then I have Windsor Blue. Cadmium Orange Hue, and Crimson. So that's what we're going to use today. And I haven't used the Yellow Ochre in this color combination before, so hope it works out. So I'm going to start by kind of covering the whole canvas with this light blue. And it's really just to help the paint flow. And I like when a color comes through the background a little bit. Kind of surprises you here and there. So I tend to, not always, but quite often do kind of a background color like this that it doesn't have to cover every inch but it's just gonna help everything flow and you never know how it'll, it might surprise you in the final product. The sides of this painting are black from, this was probably somebody's high school art project and I just left them that way and uh, if they show through, normally I try to cover every inch of the sides, but 
in this case, I think it could be kind of cool. Okay, there we go. We got the whole base covered. And now I'm going to do puddle pour with what I did yesterday was uh, kind of in a, I'm going to do it different. I did it in a circle yesterday. And today I'm going to do kind of like stripes. So we'll see what happens. I just like playing with paint. Um, I find that I have more success with things like this where I layer the paint. Um, I don't have great success with the uh, with the uh, just the pores. I mean, they come out okay, but I like these a lot better where I, I'm really surprised at the end. None of this has silicone in it. I am going to add silicone to a couple of colors. Let's see. Let's do some orange. And then I'm going to do Kind of a, I don't know if you call them an extended tree ring pour. We'll see how that works. I've got a little medicine cup here. So I'm just going to do a little dot of blue on top of each of these. Let's see. Okay, now I'm going to take the little medicine cup and start layering the paint in. Let's, let's do a little blue. And with this, I do kind of pour it the sides because I want to keep the colors separate and in layers in a way. Now we'll see. We'll see how the yellow ochre works out. Sometimes it does amazing things and sometimes it's a little bit of a scary color. <laughs> and then this is the lighter red. Oh, that one poured through. We'll see how this goes. What I'm going to do is fill up this cup and see how far it goes. And let's see. Okay, here we go. I don't always have great success with the tree ring pours. Let's see. I'm going to do it down the middle the first time. This is kind of looking like Denver Bronco colors. So that wasn't a lot of paint. Let's try again. We'll see what happens. There's white. I don't have much red left. An orange. Let's see if we can get any orange out of there. The yellow ochre. And the blue. I wonder if I have any blue any of this light blue left. Nope. Let's see. Maybe scrape some up. can get me orange. I know the colors look kind of strange right now. Well, hopefully it'll all work out. Okay, I'm going to pour this isn't really doing a tree ring thing because there's too much red in there. much white. Let's see if we can get any more paint out of these cups. A little bit. Okay. It's 
quite a bit of white left. And let's see if we can get some more blue. So this is kind of what my pour looked like yesterday. I didn't do a background color, but once I started to tip it, I was pretty surprised at the, the results. Now we're going to tip this, let's get rid of all these cups. And we're going to tip it pretty aggressively. Make, make a lot of mess, make the paint go flying. Okay. And I didn't put any silicone in anything. Blue and orange can be a tricky combination. Um, yesterday, with all the red, it worked out kind of nice. We'll see what happens today. Okay. This blue background paint almost started to dry, so instead of helping us, <clears throat> maybe because of the lights, it's actually hurting us a little bit today. So, we're barely going to have enough paint to cover the canvas. Here, drip, drip, drip over there. Help it out a little bit. So it's actually leaving <clears throat> a lot of the canvas bare, or it's picking up the blue paint from the background. It's hard to tell. But it's kind of nice that that blue's there so it doesn't look like a bare white canvas underneath. I'm tilting really aggressively. Normally, I don't like to tilt this much, but it's kind of working right now. I end up tilting a lot of paint off. I'm trying to help it a little bit, get down the ends here. I like what's happening. Kind of interesting colors. And you can see towards the bottom here that it's um, doing this diagonal thing here, but down here it's static, so we're going to try and help it. And it's really hard to not grab the edges here. Look at what's happening. It's the the blue is staying really solid, um, and the other colors are really mixing together. Kind of interesting. Let's see if I can helping it over here on the edges a little bit. Okay, it's really kind of stopping now. Let's see if we can get that moving. Oh yeah, I like this. Wow, completely different from yesterday's. But I like how the back blue background came through 
and light blue is really not my favorite color in general, but um, I'm just trying to help it out a little bit here, make sure that there's not holes in the canvas. Oh, I like this. Nice. Okay. Now, you'll see I, ha I have a painter's tarp so that I can just wipe my fingers off and I don't need a towel. It's really nice. I'm gonna get a torch just to get rid of the air bubbles. Nope. Did I close? I closed it. I'm doing it from pretty high. This is a fairly large cook's torch. And uh, it burns, if you get too close, it burns the paint really easily. Just want to break the air bubbles. There's no silicone. The flow troll might help make some cells, but it doesn't really look like it. It'll be interesting to see how this continues to move. I really like how most of it turned out. Um, interesting how there's pink here and uh, a little bit over here. What's What'll happen is the, the paint will continue to um, sink and other colors will come to the surface and we'll see what happens. Well, this turned out completely different from this, <laughs> but similar colors, similar pouring pattern, and completely different res results. That's the fun of acrylic pouring. Thanks for watching.